What have you done? Oh, my brothers. What have you done? What needed to be done? Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Lit Bashing, where the L stands for Legions, the I stands for Imperialis, and the to bashing stands for Kit Bashing. It's a very exciting and much requested Lit Bash to round off the year. The confrontation between Garviel Loken and Ezekiel, he will eventually be doing the despoiling, Abaddon. As usual, we start with the readability check. Less usual, we just start with one of our dudes, Loken. Key features here are his running pose, his raised pistol, his chainsword, fancy cape, and his less fancy hair, because who cares about health and safety in the 31st millennium? Interestingly, all the official paint jobs of this mini have him in classic Sons of Horus green. Perhaps my law's wrong, do tell me in the comments if I am, but I thought by the time of this battle the loyalists had scratched off Horus's colours and fought as Lunar Wolves again. Oh well, I'm keeping as per the paint scheme for recognisability and I just like the colour. Finding the bits is fairly easy. Lots of the minis have left-hand bolt pistols. This one here is from a leftover bit of a tactical champion. I took a risk by trying to shave the legs, arms and helmet from the Praetor. I very almost green stuffed a cloak onto a more prepared body, but the fact the backpack was already on the cloak and it had that nice round belt buckle begging for an eye of Horus just about won it out for me. Which leaves the legs and chainsword from an assault marine. The chainsword is on the wrong arm, but trimming the little thumb nub will fix that and save wasting another bit. Starting the shave, the first thing to do is to cut the sword carefully away and put it to one side. Even on these tiny models, the plastic is tough. I may have to invest in some tiny hobby saws because I go through these blades like nobody's business. So here I snap my first blade of video. There's a reason the bottom tier of my Patreon is called Scalpel Blade. I quickly realise I'm not going to be able to recycle the legs, so I just pull them off with a rusty pair of wire cutters and hurl them directly into the eyes of a baby sea turtle. I then go back to shaving and break my second scalpel blade. I replace it and then immediately break my third. But don't worry, it's not just the blades, and Corn is about to be very happy in three to skip ahead 10 seconds if you're very squeamish, I censor it, but still, now. Ouch. Perhaps I should make third tier elastoplast. That's band-aid to any Americans watching. I wash my finger and freeze the blood vessels shut with some frozen sweet corn, and then I get right back on it. I have a schedule to keep. Gluing him together is fairly uneventful. Everything snaps together pretty easily. Thanks, Karma. Then let's check the plastic against our reference image. That's pretty damn perfect worth every drop of blood and broken blade. There might even be a scalpel tip still inside him somewhere. I then tackle the head. I can tell you now I will be avoiding sculpting 1mm faces as much as possible because this was not fun. But I think I got a readable enough shape that should paint up not awfully. Then I leave the little alien head to cure whilst I get going on the base. Being a sort of diorama, even at this size, 25mm didn't quite seem good enough so I borrowed a 40mm base from a Questorus Nightbox. Then I cracked open my favourite tub of corky barky stuff, and even a real life rock I'd borrowed from an unfinished project. I also borrowed a bit of industrial rubble from I think the new Lictor kit. It was hanging in my bits box. That was a good shape. It's also very important that you glue the bits on fully out of frame. It glues better on that way. I love basing Warhammer. You take rocks and sticks, spray them black so they don't look like rocks and sticks anymore, and then paint them up to look like rocks and sticks art. Blend in the edges of the big rock with sand. I found this super retro pack of GW sand at the back of the shelf of my local Epic Scale Specialist Hobby Store. That's right, I have a local Epic Scale Specialist Hobby Store. HLS Models in Irith, the Kent End of London. It's tiny, hiding right at the back of a mini market, but it's one of the few places I've found that regularly has LI in stock. They don't sell online, but if any of my viewers are Bexley Way, hit them up. Not sponsored, just shouting out a local legend. To finish, I drill a 3mm hole in the plastic ruins bit, for reasons. Now time for my usual nostalgia for 10 days ago, 
As many of you know, I started this channel with a phone and a broom handle when I was looking for epic scale hobby content and couldn't find any. Since then, the community have shown me just how much content like this is needed, and I am very humbled to be the one providing it. Thank you to everyone who's helped the channel grow in such a short time, especially top backers Edvin, Jason, Gavin, Daryl, Not Not Joel, Stuart, Bradley, Enric, the God Emperor of Mankind, and everyone else who's been so amazing. You will all be getting a special custom mini sent to you once we hit 1k as thanks for your support. Now the soppy stuff's over, back to the baddie. Although arguably the more important half of this diorama, old Zeke was the much easier model to lip bash. There was a nicely posed cataphracty body just ripe for the Abaddonin, but we already had the sword, and the bald head would just need some shaving down of the armour panels. The claw, however, was the fun bit. After thinking I might just have to settle with a wrong-handed power fist, I noticed these crows from the Archeon kit I dug out for a potential Sanguinius. Watch this space. And their wings were very clawy. Thus began the most delicate transplantation this channel has seen yet. Five tiny feathers became five tiny claws. Plastic cemented to buggery. Far less difficult, but just as fun, the crow's beak became Abaddon's top knot. And then I smothered his feet in superglue and stuck him onto the base. Time for some paint on a base coat of Chaos Black, Dawnstone on the top of the rock, Doomble on the smaller rocks so the nice orangey brown can clash with the green Sons of Horus. Sandry dust blends into the base itself and ties this mini in with the rest of my Istvan commanders so far. I start laying up the armour panels with Cabalite Green. I don't thin the paint very much due to an advanced hobby technique called forgetting to set up a wet palette and being lazy. The red areas on both characters get corned, both heads get a few coats of Cadian flesh tone, all gunmetal areas get a coat of lead belcher, and all gold or brass areas get some Rune Lord brass, which is simply the best metallic base coat for brass or gold, don't at me. And here's that bit where I say you can stop here, and it looks pretty good. Then say, nah, let's get lit. Franklin Fleshade will bring out the details in that squishy alien baby face and Orc Flesh will green up the armour nicely and give a little shading. All the rest of the characters get some Null Oil, and the base gets some Earth Shade. Whilst the washes are drying, paint up a Thunderhawk, then carefully edge the red areas with Mephiston. You heard it here folks, use Mephiston for edging. Only seems right to neaten up Zeke's face with a bad and black, and edge highlight Garvey's armour with Sybarite. Pick out the eyebrows and nose ridge with Flayed One Flesh, Paint Loken's hair off screen with Scrag Brown, and then realise you're out of shot and highlight it with Screaming Skull. Give his face another coat of Reichland to pick out those details. Highlight the gold with Liberator Gold, and the gunmetal with Runefang Steel. Give the black areas a little variety with some Dawnstone, and then we add some Eyes of Horus. With a fist on red, Fire Dragon Bright, Avil and Sunset, and a thin line of black. Finish these eyes with a dot highlight of white. Finish off the base with a dry brush of Jakairo Orange, Sandry Dust, Deepkin Flesh, and a very light Corax White. Finally, some thin zombie gore gives the effect that this is the culmination of a long and bloody battle. And finally, finally, some vampire thirst shows the most freshly spilled blood. Tidy up the base rim, and then, Sonder Glamour Shots.
Thank you again, everyone, for watching. Thank you even more for liking, subscribing, and commenting. And biggest thanks to the Patreons who are funding this bizarre venture. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of 2023, and 2024 starts how you want it to start. I'll see you in January. I'm sure we have an epic year ahead of us. Peace and love, everyone, and keep on lit bashing. It's over, Logan. I have the high ground. I hate you!